Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's Savvy Mounts with the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heroes Advent, Alex's Path. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up. Let's go. Let's see. Alright. <clears throat> Alright, time's a wasting, Cassian. Follow me to the lab. Okay. He silently went with Alex back to his lab. He didn't say anything along the way, but he seemed happy. Getting to meet Alyssa today must have really lifted his spirits, and for that, you were glad. Here we are. Give me a moment. Alex stepped aside as he quickly changed into his usual lab coat. All right, now show me your sword if you please, Cassian. Sure thing. He unsheathed the sword from its scabbard and handed it to him. Amazing. A mere touch and I could already feel the strong magi emanating from within. He then placed the sword on one of the tables before starting the scans from his desk. Even the sword itself is remarkable. The alloys the alloys that constitute the blade are infused wholly with magi crystalline power powder powder. This enhances the weapon's ability to resonate with the wielder in the embedded crystal. That sounds like arcane stuff, alright. Arcane? Far from it. People have long attempted to enhance crude weapons by attaching gemstones and elemental crystals to them. But to forge one from scratch like this is an entirely different story. See, the crystal needs needs to maintain its shape for maximum resonance. So grinding it into powder, then adding it to the alloy usually does nothing. But this is Lady Spring we're talking about. She must have enchanted the original crystal or shaped it in some way, such that when infused with the alloy in powder form, it resonates even more potently. So, just a long-winded way of saying, yep, that's arcane stuff, all right. You get the point. Right. It's, in pretty, it's pretty incredible. Ah, back already, Festin. Where have you been? Uh, Festin was handling your paperwork upstairs when this tall gentleman from the tavern brought brought Festin some food for Master Alex and Sir Cassian. Ooh, must be from Cody's place. I'm glad they didn't take too long. Cody probably has to close his tavern soon. All right, thank you, Festin. Just put it on the table there and return to your task. Uh, understood, Master Alex, but if Festin may, could Festin also stay here to work? Since it is getting late, the people at the lounge advised Festin to work elsewhere. Fine. Just don't touch the scanner for now. I'm expecting some additional readings at the moment. Festin understands, Master Alex, sir. He looked at the mouse as he placed the food boxes at the, at the table Alex mentioned. Then retreated to a corner of the lab as he continued to go through some papers in silence. Oh, that's me, Al. What? N nothing. Actually, you said you were expecting some more results from the scanner. Thought you already thought you already done so with the sword. True, but I'm just double-checking if there was if there was something else I missed with the crystalline pow powder. Hmm, but by the looks of it, no. I don't see anything abnormal. It's from an ordinary magi crystal, just somehow able to infuse the blade as we discussed. That's still pretty wild to me. Can't help but wonder, though, what exactly is Alyssa's power again? Hmm. Well, I'd say her power classifies as arbokinesis, since she could freely manipulate the flora around her. Like the way flowers and grass bloomed at her feet whenever she walked? Indeed. Her absolute attunement to nature is mesmerizing. Granted, it only seems to do uh, to do that when she's treading on vegetation. Otherwise, she could have single she could have single-handedly restored all the plague-ridden wastelands out there. So she controls flowers and plants. But didn't you just talk about how she must have changed the crystal as well? Yes, which leads me to my next point. Her power could also be crystallokinesis. That's a mouthful. It just means being able to manipulate glass and crystals. And let me guess, Cody's power is something like terrakinesis. That's correct. In the same vein, Max is Cryo, and Rai and Ray is Pyro. That's pretty cool. So everyone has their own Kinesis power. <clears throat> is something wrong, Alex? Huh, no, it's nothing. Hmm, I do feel a little peckish. Now, let's just eat. Better not let folk co uh, Cody's food get cold. Second, y'all, it is water time. Wubba dubba dubba. <laughs> sure, good call. You want something to eat too, Festin? Ah, oh, thank you, Sir Cassian. Uh, but Festin already had cheddar for dinner. Festin should be good to go until nap time. Huh. Don't mind him. I won't even pretend I could ever understand his eating habit. R right. And so you both chowed down on your dinner as you sat at the large table opposite of where Festin was working. The food was already a bit lukewarm, but still tasted amazing. You couldn't help but keep an eye on the mouse as you went through your meal. Hmm. So, Festin, what's your power, actually? Power, Cassian, sir. Isn't the same power Sir Cassian and Master Alex was discussing? Yeah, that's it. 
I'm just curious, since you don't look like you'd hold any of those elemental powers. That's because Festin does not. Festin's power is crystallokinesis. Yeah, he can essentially shape crystals and form into his will. Festin might not be proficient with it, but Festin tries his best. Yes, yes, that's also one of the reasons why I kept him around the lab. He can help with equipment maintenance, especially the crystal ones. But this weapon, I'd wager it's way beyond his understanding. Here, come take a look, Festin. Festin got off from his stepping stool as he set it to a higher level before the table, but before climbing up to inspect the sword carefully. Fascinating craftsmanship! Festin has never seen anything like it! The crystalline structure is flexible and malleable, yet bonds strongly with metallic alloys. Such meticulous and detailed work, Festin could never achieve such a thing. If this is Circassian's weapon, is this Circassian's weapon, Master Alex? Indeed, Lady Ele <clears throat> I mean to say, this was a gift Lady Spring bestowed upon Cassian. Oh, when you convened with her earlier today, Master Alex and Circassian. Yes, Festin understands. This is nothing short of actual treasure, Circassian. Please keep it well. I will. The room fell silent again as you finished eating and rested for a bit. Alex was already ta typing away at his desk again, looking at some sort of data on screen. Hmm. Hmm? You glanced at Alex as you vaguely noticed him staring at you. Actually, Cassian, I just had an idea. Yeah? Well, what's up? Come, take the sword. Uh, okay. You went to take the sword from the table. Even though it was yours, you felt rather anxious as your hand was about to touch it. You closed your eyes, expecting to get blasted away like last time. But aside from the surge of energy that Alex described earlier, you didn't feel much else happening with the sword. Huh. I see. Naturally, nothing would happen since both the sword and the crystal have been attuned to your resonance. Now, try focusing on Festin. Uh, focusing as in... Remember what she told us back there? About how you can resonate with others' powers? I don't know how to do so, verbati how to do so verbatim. But do try something. Maybe if you will it, it will happen. Right. Here goes nothing, then. Hmm? What is Master Alex and Sir Cassian talking about? You'll see, Festin. We'd like to test something. Now just keep this between us, all right? Festin understands. Please proceed with what you were doing, then, Sir Cassian. Yeah, as if I know what I'm doing, what I'm doing to begin with. With a sigh, you decided to look at Festin, the mouse staring back at you innocently. After a moment, you closed your eyes. The first thought that came to your mind was that you wanted to become him be like him in your mind, which felt really awkward and intrusive at first. But as you slowly suppressed those worries, several questions started posing themselves to you. What are Festin's powers? What's he like? How does he usually talk? Hmm, small-bodied, yet strong and delicate enough to work with heavy machinery, has power to control crystals, and refers to himself in third person. Somehow, as you answered those questions one by one, you felt a strange flow of energy coming towards you, or your mind. You couldn't tell for sure. But at that moment, you felt like something was was suddenly unlocked as a flood of information washed over your mind. Gah! You flinched a little, luckily not enough for the for the two to notice. With an internal sigh, you took a bit of time to properly process everything that was coursing through your mind. Huh? Is this all of his thoughts? And, is this all of his thoughts and emotions right now? Fascination, curiosity, and a whole lot of excitement. Oh, is this some kind of special moment? He looks really happy here, holding a piece of paper. It's like some kind of certificate. But beneath all this happiness, there's fear, anxiety, and a bit of sadness. Like, you know, water time. I guess this is his fear of being yelled at by Alex. And maybe he feels sad because this implies he is not doing good enough. As you opened your eyes again, you could see Alex was already at his desk monitoring something, while Festin having returned to his previous task. Fascinating. The monitor's detecting a lot of magi fluctuation on your end, Cassian. If I were here, he, if he if I were here and couldn't see you, he'd have assumed that there were two festins based on the magi signature. On second thought, two festins in one place? I can't even imagine how that would be. Brr. Oh, Master Alex doesn't need to imagine. Cassian can show you right now. Oh, heavens above, what do you think you're doing, Cassian? Hmm? Uh, is Cassian doing something wrong, Master Alex? Uh, please do not yell at Cassian. Not stop it, Cassian! Just one Festin is enough, but Cassian thinks Festin is really liking this, right? He, <laughs> this is amazing, Sir Cassian. Almost like Festin is meeting someone from his hometown. Festin is happy that there are two Festins now. Yes, now have Mr. Alex like liquid sugar with coffee sprinkled in. But hey, that's a good way to drink coffee, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Maybe for you, it's way too sweet for me, Alex. Oh, think the maker that this didn't actually change your personality. You held back your laugh as the Lynx let out a huge sigh of relief. Nah, I don't feel any different. Just actually felt Festin's emotions and thoughts. 
Granted, it's a lot more than I expected, but see, I'm still here. Still as myself. Interesting. So both you and the weapon remained in, a, remained in an inert state until, it trigger, until triggered by you. Try to think of something Festin-related. Like what? Well, I don't know. Maybe try to see what he's thinking of doing right now. Uh, okay, then. Sorry, Festin. He muttered as you stared at the mouse again, who only stared back in mild curiosity. He's thinking about some sort of beans? I don't know the beans! Ugh. Yes, Sir Cassian. And Festin was thinking of which beans to use for Master Alex's next cup of coffee. Hmm, I see. He was thinking of a specific type of beans, but his actual course of action was to make some coffee for me. So you're sensing the thought and emotions, not the actual intent. I can see why this could result in misleading information for you. Right, I guess. Anything else you'd want me to do? Hmm, this next test is based on what we observed last time with the energy orb. Alex grabbed a crystal from the shelf next to him and placed it on his open hand. Here, try to resonate with the crystal and make it float. Just like what you did with the orb. Okay, here goes. Nervously, you closed your eyes and calmed your thoughts before attempting what Alex asked. Firstly, you pictured the energy flowing through your heart before diverging towards your hands. Then, as you opened your eyes and looked upon the crystal, you imagined the energy flowing towards it. And lo and behold, within a matter of seconds, the crystal actually lit up gradually and hovered above Alex's hand. Whoa! That is amazing, Sir Cassian. Festin is impressed. Indeed. All right, you can put it down now. I'll go through what we've gathered so far. Festin will get the coffee ready soon. Oh, that's right. Festin, make sure Caff makes some for Cassian as well. Yes, Master Alex, sir. Are you even going to sleep tonight? Oh, me? Don't worry about me. I can run on coffee for days. It can't be good for your health. <laughs> Sometimes that's just a trade-off. You vaguely notice the lynx glancing at you as you retrieved, your, as you retrieved the sword and sheathed it. Hmm. Uh, Alex, is something wrong? I, uh... <sighs> Listen, I guess I have one more thing to ask of you. Sh sure. What is it? Second, y'all. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there. Let me get some water, y'all. It's a bit personal, so I guess you can see why I'm having trouble saying it. Uh, oh. Oh. At least you seem to know what I mean to say. Tell me, how did it feel when you resonated with Festin? I said it was a bit much, but it was actually a lot. Although the, all the thoughts and emotions was like a flood rushing through my mind. I learned quite a few things about Festin, but at the same time, I felt like I was just intruding on his privacy. This felt wrong. Oh man, is this what Alyssa felt like when she stood in front of so many people? I don't mind, Cassian. Huh? I said I don't mind. Honestly, when I tried to think about how invasive it would feel, I don't really feel anything. So in a sense, I'd like to know, from your perspective, what it feel like to be a fractured? Are you really sure about this, Alex? I am. Whenever you're ready, just do it. Yes. Sheesh. With a gulp, you decided to steal yourself and comply to Alex's request. All right. You took a good look at the Lynx, who seemed nervous as ever despite his dejected look, being before closing your eyes. <sighs> Repeating the same process with Festin, you've arrived at the questions that needed answering about Alex. Alex, he's really smart, calculative, great at, great at, great at science, languages, pretty harsh on others, no longer has parents like me. He's surprisingly close to Toby. What else? What's his elemental power? He's never told me. Is it electricity? Electro? Since he works with machines. No, nothing is coming up. Oh, he talked about being fractured. Gah! All of a sudden, you felt that overwhelming surge of energy rushing towards your mind that you could only assume was Alex's. Stay cool, stay cool. As the flow seemed to have calmed down, you found yourself slowly grasping onto it. S so this is Alex's emotions. Why can't I see any... Ah! The sharp pain forced your eyes open as you found yourself crashing against the shelf, gasping for air. C Cassian! Oh crap, are you okay? I, I can't... Jesus! You tried to speak, but words couldn't really come out of your mouth. Your mind was endlessly flooded with incomprehensible images like a broken slideshow. You tried drawing from your elemental reservoir, but nothing happened. It felt as if something was placing a mental block on you. It was suffocating. You yearned to break out from this unseen prison, but no matter how, you, how much you wailed and struggled, it all ended in utter darkness and silence. Eventually, the image that somehow lingered was on was an arm of a child, reaching out helplessly toward three silhouettes from afar. Is this... is this Alex? Oh god, I can't anymore. I'm sorry. Huh? 
You found yourself lying down on one of the desks that's been cleared out for you. Alex was keeping an eye on his monitor on his monitor screen while Feston was just worriedly staring at you. You wondered why he wasn't wearing his lab coat until you realized it was on you the whole time. He must have put it there while you were out cold. What? Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribing, that notification bell, leave a super thanks or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to check out that Patreon, y'all. Bye bye